everyone. I'm Margaret Miller. I teach viola and chamber music here at Colorado State University. This video is to help you prepare for the Allstate Orchestra auditions. The Allstate Orchestra, of course, will be here at CSU in February of next year. The first excerpt that I'd like to play is the Berlioz Overture to the Roman Carnival Overture. So I thought I'd start by playing that first. So this is an excerpt that is going to show up on just about every professional orchestra audition list. So it's great that you had the opportunity to get to learn it now. One thing I always tell my students here and any students I work with when it comes to orchestral excerpts, make sure that you print out an entire part. Most orchestra parts are available on IMSLP these days. You need context to understand how your part fits within the orchestra sound as a whole. And Berlioz being a late romantic composer, you might expect a large orchestration. In this case, since this is at the beginning of the overture, not terribly much. However, there are some very important things to keep in mind that will help your audition stand out. One, take the espressivo very seriously. Consider this a vocal line. Make sure your vibrato is very connected. You're getting a beautiful singing tone at all times. And the gestures are also really important as well. For instance, on the um, second line, the hairpins. You guys know about hairpins, yes? We get very good as musicians about going up. We aren't always so good about coming back down with the sound. So make sure on the beginning of the second line, try not to use a lot of bow on that second quarter note. That's the low point of the phrase. So you don't need a lot of bow. Very important to keep that in mind in a work like this. And again, the bar before two, make sure you sustain that note as long as humanly possible. There are several different bowings that are available right here. I'm partial myself to being on a down bow with that forte. And there's just something really great about releasing the sound on a quick retake at rehearsal number two. So as far as the orchestral accompaniment goes, when you listen to this, and I strongly encourage that you do this, it's 16th notes. Straight 16th notes being battered around between different instruments in the orchestra from the beginning up to number three. Actually, at number two, it goes to straight 16th notes in the clarinet part. And then at number three, your melodic line, you join with the cellos. It's in canon with the violins. The texture is much thicker. So in some ways, you need a warmer, bigger mezzo forte sound than you do at the beginning when the texture is much thinner. And of course, experiment with some very expressive fingerings. You'll notice you can play a lot with being in third position. Hopefully those hairpins came across pretty clearly. So making sure that you don't use a lot of bow, but keeping it as connected as possible, especially across the bar line. And as far as vibrato, make your vibrato as continuous as possible. Again, if you were a singer, you would probably not stop your vibrato for every note. So the same thing for us as string players. Just 
is so it really has a sense of a long flowing vocal line. This is a very fun overture to play. This introduction, of course, not terribly fast on Dante Sostenuto, but then of course it takes off in the uh, main part of the overture. The second excerpt for All State Orchestra is from the first movement of Mozart's Symphony Number no. 35, subtitled the Hofner Symphony. Difference between this and playing the Berlioz, which is rather slow and lyrical, this is fast and light. Personally, I find Mozart to be one of the more challenging composers to play well, just because you have to take care with how you end phrases, how you start notes, making sure that you don't crash land on fortes, and that's always very, very clear. <laughs> So I think you could hear and see some of the challenges. Again, thinking about what's happening in the orchestra at this point, it goes from piano to subito forte, but it's not like playing a Beethoven subito forte. It's a little bit smaller in contrast in Mozart's time than it is through Beethoven, so be careful there. The biggest challenge, as I mentioned earlier about phrase endings, happens in the fourth full bar. That second beat, it may be a higher note, but it needs to be a little bit softer. So the downbeat is always strong, and then the up bow is a little bit lighter. So if you think long, short, that will help a lot and give some air under that. That's probably, for me, one of the biggest challenges about playing Mozart is how you end a phrase and end it well. It takes an awful lot of focus, an awful lot of concentration. So for me, one of the things that I would do with a fast excerpt like this, I would look at the metronome marking that's been given to you, keeping in mind that Mozart did not have a metronome. It's quarter note is 156. That's the final tempo. So when you know that, you can back up your metronome as far as you'd like, just to make sure that you can feel all the beats in the bar, the rhythm is really accurate, the rests are consistent, and the articulation is also very consistent. From there, you can move your metronome up until you get to a comfortable performance tempo. So a couple of thoughts about fingerings. You'll notice that I started in third position. I like any vibrato except fourth finger, so that's why I'm starting on second finger and third position. It also helps set up the octave. And then, You've probably run into this in your practicing with these 16th note pickups that happen all over the place. There's one exception, but all of them are going to start on third finger. This one right here at the end of measure 47 is the only one where you don't because of what comes next. Then after that, and what I would suggest too, use those two rests to shift. It, you'll have plenty of time. If you try and shift right when you have to play, chances are you'll miss it. So preparation is key during the rests on those shifts. And as far as the trills go, you know, if you can sneak in the upper note, it's a little ch more challenging at this tempo, especially when you get to the last one. But starting in second position will be a big help there. And that is a trill on the last one, F sharp to G sharp. And then one final little thing, measure 58. What I'm thinking about during those rests, I'm thinking about the violin 16th notes. They've got this scale that goes all the way up to a high D, and then the violas and cellos 
take over that line. So if I'm thinking about those 16th notes, I can jump right in on that tempo. So when you're practicing with the metronome, while you're focusing on maintaining your pulse, also make sure that you're hearing straight 16th notes in there. In fact, even from the very beginning, just like the Berlioz has 16th notes, this piece does as well. It's more scale-like as opposed to accompanying, but it's still the driving rhythmic force, and that's an important thing to keep in mind when you're preparing. And when you know that, when you know what happens in other parts of the orchestra, that comes across in your recording. And that's one of the things that can really help you stand out. Thank you for your time. Really look forward to seeing you in February. Thanks so much for watching this Colorado All-State Prep video. If you have any questions or concerns, please visit music.colostate.edu for more information, including the opportunity to schedule an individual visit with the School of Music, Theater, and Dance. Good luck on your audition.